guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. It's been quite a while since my last Mario Party Lost Bits video, but we are back at it again with the next entry in the series, Mario Party 6. This game featured a swath of new boards, minigames, including some utilizing a new microphone peripheral, as well as a day-night mechanic that was new to the series. Well, mostly. Anyways, Mario Party 6 has a whole bunch of unused graphics, regional changes, as well as even some unused minigame leftovers. Before we jump in though, just want to give a quick shout out to my group channel, Minus World. In Minus World, me as well as a bunch of my other YouTuber pals have a podcast, we do challenges, and we play a whole bunch of games ranging from Sonic to Mario Party and pretty much everything in between. So be sure to check us out, I'll have a link for you down in the description below and I hope to see you there. Anyways, with all that said, roll a dice block on that like button below, it's time to find some lost bits. Alright, first up, let's talk about some differences seen in Mario Party 6 between different regional releases. For starters here, there's some more basic stuff like the European and Australian versions including a language option right on the title screen instead of just the press start prompt. And also again, for the Australian and European releases, to account for the lower 50 FPS refresh rate of the PAL version, the Fruit Talktail minigame had its time limit increased 20% up to 72 seconds instead of 60 as is seen in the other regions. Another interesting change for the PAL region releases is seen with the battle spaces. In the North American and Japanese versions, the spaces use a simple B, whereas the European and Australian versions opted for a space symbol similar to the one seen way back in Mario Party 2 instead. I can only assume this was changed since the European version was localized for a whole bunch of different languages and the corresponding word for battle might not have started with a B for all of the languages, so having a B might not have been as clear for those players. Then next, exclusive to the Japanese version of the game, both Brighton and Twyla, the two celestial mascots, had voices. They almost sound kind of scary, I find, but it's unclear why these or other voices weren't ever implemented in any of the other versions of this game. And lastly for the regional changes, in the minigame Garden Grab, while in all of the rest of the releases carrots get yoinked out of the ground, in the Japanese version a daikon radish is seen instead. And it's not just a simple color swap either, as the model for the radish is a bit more thick as well. Daikon radishes are pretty uncommon in the West, so the change was probably made to make the vegetable something more people were familiar with. Now next up, let's move on to some unused graphics, the first of which is this early logo for the game. And actually this logo looks pretty similar to the Mario Party 5 one right down to the star pattern on the letters. And this would make sense as the developers likely used the Mario Party 5 logo as a reference. Even the 6 here appears to be the same style and inner pattern as the 5 in the Japanese logo, albeit in a different color. Then next we got this graphic found in a sample file and it features some Japanese text as well as this thing cut off on the bottom right here that honestly I don't see it but I've seen this described as a nose. Anyways, this Japanese text here apparently translates to test board, and based on its aspect ratio, it seems like this might have been a placeholder graphic for the one seen at the start of playing on a given board. The Mario Party series has been no stranger to test graphics here on Lost Bits, and Mario Party 6 is certainly no exception. Found amongst the files for the file select screen, there are a pair of test graphics, one simple one that translates to letter or character test, and then there's also this one that basically translates to data select, so yeah, this appears to be a placeholder graphic for the select data option seen on the file select screen. And last up for the unused graphics, there are a whole bunch of early placeholder ones for the minigame tour bus section of the game. We got some very crude early models here of Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, Peach, and then driving the bus there is a shy guy as well as Twyla, I think. And in addition to all of these fellas, there's also this mock-up graphic of the characters at what looks to be the start of a board game as well. 
This is the first time we've seen placeholder models like this in a Mario Party game on this series, but honestly, I think these are really cool. Now next, another thing that's been seen in pretty much every game in the series on Lost Bits so far is of course the normally unseen message that's shown if you try to buy a star with already the maximum 999 in your possession. Just like in the other games, this message basically tells you that you already have too many stars and that you can't carry any more. I don't think it's possible to obtain 999 stars by normal means in this game. I mean, someone was able to get 919, which is pretty dang close, but at least as far as we know, unless you're using cheats to get as many, yeah, most people probably won't ever see this normally. Next, although when moving the camera to places you aren't normally able to typically reveal some details that aren't seen under normal circumstances, like this striped green floor in the Popstar minigame, there's another unseen detail that's particularly of note. In the Lab Brat section of the game, if you move the camera behind Egad's large head, we can see a texture of a golden tile with a blue arrow on it. It's unclear what exactly this was meant for, but yeah, I think it's pretty funny to see that this was hidden just behind this big old head here. Now, next up, another thing this series is absolutely no stranger to, Mario Party 6 has a bunch of debug features for us to play around with here. The first of these debug features is of course the debug menu, and here it's pretty much the same as it's seen in Mario Party 4 and 5, which in turn are all basically the same as how they're seen in the Nintendo 64 games. Yeah, this is definitely a Mario Party staple it seems. As such, it should be to no one's surprise that the menu here works just like it did in previous games, but if this happens to be your first video, here's a quick rundown. Basically, all of the minigames are listed on this menu in transliterated Japanese, and once you select one that you'd like to play, a new menu is seen where you can select which character you and the other players play as. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward, and it's a really awesome way to load into any minigame quickly. And just like in previous games, there's also the mess check option on this debug menu which brings up a message test screen. And of course, again, just like in previous games, this allows us to basically view all of the different text messages seen throughout the game. It's cool, I guess, if you're into reading minigame descriptions, character dialogue, and this. Next up, this debug menu also has a mic cell or mic selection option, and this leads to yet another debug submenu. And this one here is basically a debug menu for the microphone quiz games, as here you can select which type of game you want to play, its sub options, as well as difficulty, so you can max it out and try some really tough challenges too. One other thing that's interesting about this debug menu is that it lists boards 1 through 6 and then 10 and 11, thus implying that maybe there were up to 3 boards that may have been cut from the game. Now this is just speculation, and what the boards might have been isn't clear as board 10 is just the party mode tutorial, so it might have been something less significant like that too. Now another thing that we saw starting with Mario Party 5 was the implementation of debug orbs, and they once again find their way here into Mario Party 6. The first, and frankly least interesting of these, is D-Decision, the D likely standing for debug. Although it doesn't seem to have any effects left over that are functional, its description states that this would have been used as part of some sort of decision check mode. Then next, there are several event debug orbs, one for the duel event, miracle event, bullet bill move event, as well as ones for the DK, Red Boo, and Bowser events. And although each of their descriptions states that you can't use them, you actually can still use them in a game if you force them back into it. And yeah, as you'd expect, using them basically just triggers the given event, not much else to say about them. Next up we got the D-Warp Capsule, and just like we saw back in Mario Party 5, this one lets you move all four of a given game's players basically to any space you want in the game. This one is really handy if you want to get to a certain area really quick, and I'm sure this was used by the developers to set up and test certain occurrences between players on a board quickly. One interesting quirk I found with this orb is that it also lets you place characters on certain spots that you normally can't start from, and if you move starting from any of these spots, the camera will like freak out and then at least on this board, I guess there's some sort of failsafe that just immediately warps the player to DK or Bowser's ship here, it's pretty strange. Then next is the D camera orb, and once again, just like in Mario Party 5, this allows the user to move the camera basically wherever they want on a given board. 
Although nowadays emulators have tools to do this, this is an awesome option for anyone playing on real hardware if they want to zip the camera around to areas that you otherwise wouldn't be able to. It's kind of unfortunate though that this only works for a board and not during a minigame or any of the menus or anything like that. And lastly for the orbs, there's actually one that was outright scrapped from the game and never saw the light of day. This orb is listed as Barrel Orb, and based on the description, this would allow the player to hide in a barrel in order to avoid a duel one time. Essentially a dual deterrent, similar to how Boo Away or Snack Orbs repel a Boo and Chain Chomp event, respectively. Now it seems this orb might have been cut earlier on in development, as although it does have its description text, there's no resulting text for when the player would use the orb, nor does it have any associated graphics for it left over in the game. Moving on, we got some more debug features which, you guessed it, are also ones we've seen in previous games, go figure. We got a memory usage meter that appears in the top left of the screen when activated, as well as the overscan border display which enables this red box on screen. As always, this was basically used by the developers to determine where user interface graphics could be placed in order to be visible on most TVs. And another thing here that's basically the same as we saw in Mario Party 5 is the player animation debug test room. It's awesome, it's cool, I like it, but yeah, nothing we haven't already seen on the series, so let's move on. And now lastly for this video, Mario Party 6 actually has a handful of unused minigames left over in the game. The first of these is listed as Sequence DLL, and although this is also found in Mario Party 5, I don't believe I actually covered it in my video on it, so this is actually one of the few firsts in this video I guess. This is an incredibly basic minigame, probably the most basic one I've ever seen. Pretty much, the idea is to just jump 10 times within the allotted 10 second time limit. Yup, that's really it. And here if you manage to do 10 jumps, not only will you set a new record, but even if you play as any other character, the win message will always default to just giving Mario credit for the win. And this minigame is apparently also found in Mario Party 7, and even 8, and due to the fact that it's so basic, I can only assume this was a very early test of how minigames and win criteria would function. Then moving on, next is an unused minigame titled TT Wars, and once again, as you can see, it's incredibly basic. You can set up some values to make a different layout, and then once in, you pretty much just have to move some tiles with the main objective being getting the red ball from the top to the bottom. It seems like this could have made for a pretty solid minigame had it been developed some more, but yeah, I guess it wasn't deemed worthy for this game. And last up here we got another unused minigame, or rather an unused test map I guess. Now, this appears to be set in the same area as the test map we saw back in Mario Party 5, as the landscape looks the same and we can once again see this wall of water. But this time there are also a few more additions including some floating platforms, three cars down here for some reason. Oh, and there's also this annoying Bowser text box on screen that never goes away, so yeah, there's that. Unfortunately for us, you can't actually play around in the map or anything, so it's definitely more of just a visual experience here as we can just move the camera around to take a look at all of the things. Certainly not as fun as some of the other test maps we've seen, but hey, at least it's something. And that'll wrap up this video on Mario Party 6, and I hope you enjoyed! One more GameCube Mario Party to go, and then we can finally move on to some of the Wii stuff. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my other Lost Bits, and make sure you're subscribed to find your way back here in the future. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.